Welcome to the July 28th meeting of the Election Commission. Um, the uh, roll call, Mayor Sirbrecht? Here. City Attorney John Starin? I am here. And I am Troy Mitchell, City Clerk, and I'm here. First item of business is approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. Support. Moved by Mr. Sam, supported by Mayor Turbrack. Roll call vote. Mayor Turbrack? Yes. Mr. Sarin? Yes. Oh, yes. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. I have reviewed them and I move to approve. I will support that. Okay, Ms. Aaron. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mayor Turbeck? Yes. I vote yes. The next item on the agenda is to conduct the um, public accuracy test, which we will do now. Um, I have printed the zero report and I am opening the polls. And I now will begin inserting the ballots. The logic in accuracy testing is a very important part of every election and it's also a requirement by Michigan election law. It tests the programming in the tabulator to make sure all the programming in each tabulator and each precinct is accurate. And it also tests that the ballots are accurate as far as paper weight, color of the paint, And so what, we're, what I do now is the basic um, premise behind testing, a test deck is what they call it, is what we're running through the tabulator right now. We're using precinct two, is that each ballot tests a different scenario that could be voted on election day. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this ballot just shot back and that's because it's a blank ballot. So someone could go into the precinct, mark no choices, and the tabulator would spit that back out and it says right on the screen, are you sure you want to pass a blank ballot? The voter would then have the choice of casting the ballot as is, as blank, or they could signal to a precinct worker that it's 10 feet away come assist them and uh, return to pass the ballot. Now one fun fact is, and a lot of people think, why would someone cast a blank ballot? And actually people do. There's sometimes people want to maintain their perfect voting record, but they may not necessarily want to vote in that election. So they will cast a blank ballot. So different scenarios on these ballots could be, as we just said, a blank ballot. It could be an overvote, which is when if you voted for more candidates than that was allowed in a particular race. Um, an undervote, which would be if you did not vote in certain races, which is also, obviously, that's fine. So. This one is an example of an overvote. So this tabulator will tell you, you voted for too many candidates. In this um, particular instance, it's saying you voted for too many candidates in the United States Senator race. So you can pass that as is, or you could ask for help. So you could fix that error. Other things that might shoot back is if there's a stray mark, 
a straight mark would be if you marked on your ballot, but it wasn't in the rectangle next to the candidate's name, it would reject that. And we're also testing um, every possible scenario that would be correct. So we're making sure every candidate, a mark for every candidate is being read correctly. Now for this test deck, there's 62 ballots. So it's predetermined that there are 62 different voting scenarios on the ballot. So it's testing all of those scenarios to make sure the tabulator reads them correctly. So as you can see now, these ballots are just being accepted because this is the portion of the test deck where and it's just making sure that every candidate is being accepted by the tabulator. Vote for every candidate. Another item we'll be checking, um, so I'll take this moment to do a quick reminder in um, the August 4th primary, you cannot cross party, so it will um, shoot that back if you, for example, you voted Republican for the county executive and then voted Democrat for um, a state rep. For the primary, you need to stay in one, within one party for all partisan races. The public action test also, of course, um, is verification that the equipment is working properly. Now, at the city clerk's office, we do um, this testing with every single precinct. This is done um, as soon as we receive the ballots to allow for any time if there was an error detected in either the equipment or the ballots or the programming um, that we could contact the appropriate parties. So we have tested every machine and um, previously, now this is what we're doing though to show the public that yes, we need everything. Once this test is completed, we'll have all the test decks for each precinct uh, secured in an approved ballot container. And they are inner seal. So no one has access to any of these test decks. And as a reminder, the election is August 4th. A week from today, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. All precincts are open. 
And we are asking uh, that anyone choosing to vote at the polls does wear a mask. You will have um, appropriate PPE available for all of our workers that anybody would encounter. Uh, we're, we will have social distancing guidelines in place. We have markers showing people um, where to line up so they'll maintain a six feet distance. Our voting booths will be placed six feet apart. We have um, hand sanitizing stations. We have cleansing, antibacterial cleansing situations. Station, sorry. Our workers will be cleaning the voting booths. And we will have uh, disposable pens that will be, um, after each voter, they'll place that in a bucket. So no one will have to reuse the same writing utensil. And it's not you like to get an absentee ballot if that is your choice. Just contact the city clerk's office at clerk at berkeleymich.net um, or feel free to give us a phone call 248-658-3310. We will be open to the public this Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. For anyone that can actually come into City Hall for election-related business only, but that would include registering to vote or requesting an absentee ballot. You can even vote your absentee ballot inside City Hall on Saturday. You're doing a great job, Victoria. Keep it up. Thanks. Only two more to go. Well, I like this action the last ballot in each test stack is always a different precinct. So as I said, this is a tabulator for precinct two. So this ballot should be it's a ballot for precinct three. So that shows you um, it will not even take it. And it won't even give you an option. It just the screen says contact your poll worker. You actually have a ballot for your would have a ballot. So that concludes the feeding of the ballot. Um, so now what we will do is we will close the polls. And the polls are officially closing. It takes a few moments. Okay, so now we have the Polls closed. Normally you would both be here and I would show you the seal. Um, I'm not sure if we can read that. Let me see it. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. So it is 
Seal 50640. Mm -hmm. And I will take that. And we'll seal the compartment that the programming is. Michelle, the document and how this compartment where the drive is located cannot be printing out all the final reports. This is what happens at the end of the night um, when we're closing the polls regularly. We print multiple copies of the reports to go to the county. One report stays here and one report goes to public. Okay, and that concludes our um, public accuracy test. Rick Mitchell, I have a question. Yes. Um, we have just gone through the public accuracy test for the in-person voting. Can you briefly explain to us how the absentee ballot counting process works? Um, well, the ballot stack is the same as um, the stock that we just tested. Um, so that is one safeguard. And actually, the county is doing the um, accuracy test for absentee ballots because something new this election, the count, Oakland County is actually going to be tabulating all of our absentee ballots for us. Um, this was the decision um, approved by council at the previous meeting. And what it's going to ensure they have high speed tabulators there. So the county is sending secure drivers out to pick up the ballots and they will tabulate them the night of the election. So the this week, I believe it's tomorrow, but this week the county is actually going to be doing a public accuracy test just like this. It will be um, on Zoom where they will be testing the absentee ballots. Okay. So the county would send the um I think you call it secure driver would come pick up the ballot sometime, I presume after eight o'clock on election they, night. They actually are picking them up on Monday. So they're coming Monday after 4 p.m. And then any ballot that comes in between 4.01 p.m. Monday, August 3rd and 8 p.m. Tuesday, August 4th will be tabulated in the precinct, the appropriate precinct. Okay. So we do have a team of election workers of differing parties who will be taking the ballots um, to each precinct a couple times a day or as needed. We'll see what the volume is. And they will be doing that in public. They'll be opening the ballot and feeding it into the tabulator. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further questions? I do not have any questions. I know you've done a a significant amount of planning, not only as you do for any election, but also dealing with a pandemic uh, election, which we're expecting high turnout. Now, hopefully that's more on the absentee side and we don't have as, as much traffic next week, but either way, I know that we are prepared for that traffic as well. So thank we you. We are, for everything absolutely. Done. Thank you for that. Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. If there's no further questions. Move, move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Stern? Yes. Mayor Sergrak? Yes. Thank you everyone for attending.